Hey, welcome to the Sander Fact, where I get to frequently asked questions. Uh, one I get asked a ton is, what do I do about writer's block? And this is a great question, because writer's block is the big boogeyman in uh, writing circles, and it's useful for new writers to hear what other writers say about it, because really, writing is this weird thing where you can't learn to write except by practicing on your own. This goes for a lot of things, I'm sure, but it's really hard to mentor people in writing other than to say, well, go try out a bunch of stuff and see what works because writers are all so different and individual, right? Like I know writers who do all of their work writing all the books they're going to write like during two months of the year and then 10 months, it's all just prep work for the rest of the 10 months. And then there are people like me that write every day uh, 2,000 words and are kind of in the slow and steady uh, wins the race sort of camp. Um, and those are like polar opposites. I don't know that I could sit and write a book in two months and then, you know, not write for the rest of the of the year. Um, and so how to get over writer's block is also really individual. Uh, it's, it's very difficult because people like to compare my productivity with other um, authors' productivity, and that's just not useful for anybody. I, I can talk about why I am productive. Um, I'm productive for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, um, I wrote a bunch of bad books before I started writing good ones. This turned out to be really good for my own personal psychology. Um, I learned good habits. Um, I learned to keep on working at things. I learned how to revise kind of the hard way. Um, I was not good at it when I started. Um, and I count the, all those years writing books and slowly incrementally getting better with teaching me good habits that I just maintain today. I am the son of an accountant. My mother's an accountant. And I credit a lot of my success with the fact that she trained me to work like an accountant. Um, I am an artist who has the work ethic of an accountant. And I do my work every day. And this has been really, really helpful for me. The trick is writing is an art. And some days, writing just doesn't work. Um, and it's hard to say why. With me, it's usually one of two things. One is, I'm just having an off day. That happens most of the time when this is going wrong. Uh, it's just not working for whatever reason. Uh, there's some little problem with the story, perhaps, or maybe not even really a problem at all. Uh, but just, you know, I'm, I'm in a funk or something like that. And the solution to fixing that is to write anyway, right? Um, write the story poorly. Now, this is really hard for new writers because new writers don't ever want to throw away anything that they spend a lot of work on. And I can understand that. You don't want to write something that you know is not going to go in the book. Why would you write it? Why not just write it right the first time? So you sit and you think about what would be the right thing to write. The problem is that for a lot of us, at least for me, uh, unless I give my subconscious something to work with, I won't come up with the solution for what the right thing to write. Um, I will sit and think forever rather than actually approaching it. And if I write it wrong, if I sit down and I write that scene the way I was planning it, knowing it's not going to work, and then I give it a day, the next day, my by then, my brain has been like, you know what you did wrong. It's the wrong viewpoint. If you just swat to this other viewpoint and show this from that uh, character's eyes, that whole scene will just pop and work. Nine out of ten times, that happens. That is, it just works. One out of 10 times, maybe I should say eight out of 10 times, it works that way. And one out of 10 times, it was just okay anyway, right? I was just in a funk. I wrote the scene and it turns out, you know what? That's, that's a great scene. Uh, I don't know why I was having so many problems with it. Once in a while, uh, one portion of the time, I do that and it's still wrong and my brain doesn't know how to fix it. That's when I know that there is some sort of deeper problem that I may have to back up and figure out, you know, my... I don't want to keep writing, and you might have this too with writer's block, is you don't want to keep perpetuating a problem to the point that it makes the problem bigger and bigger and bigger, which makes much more work for fixing later on. It's the, that whole idea that if you're a few degrees off on a short distance, it doesn't matter, but a few degrees off, the longer you go, the bigger that gap from where you need to be becomes. And I can understand this. Uh, for me, even in that case, a lot of times the right thing to do is to write other portions of the book and keep momentum on that knowing that part of it is just not working. For a lot of us, um, that momentum, even if you're getting further and further away from the way you know it should be, you can be aware of it 
and you can kind of plan for it. You can be like, all right, this whole section is going to need to be written. This whole character is going to need to be rewritten. But everything else in the book is working. So I'm just going to finish the book and then figure out what to do with this character. I've done that before. I have also gone back and ripped out the whole character right in the middle and written a new one or a new plot for that character up until the point where I stopped. I recommend newer writers be very careful about doing that. Uh, because your instincts as a writer just aren't good enough yet to know if you're making the book better or if you're just making the book different. A lot of things as a new writer turn into you just trying something new and trying something different, and it isn't necessarily better. Um, but that's good experience for you, so you could feel willing, or you should feel that you can do whatever you need to do to make yourself into a better writer. You don't have to listen to my advice, or rather you should listen to it, try it out, and if it doesn't work for you, you should ignore it. Um, but for me, that's what happens. What do I do with writer's block? I write anyway. I have something happen no matter what it is, even if it is outlandish and I know it's never going to end up in the book. I need to give my subconscious something to work on.